Hey everybody, it's Kermit here, and uh, I'm going to go fly my Grumman Wildcat. We're going to uh, do a little test flight here, and I'm going to go ahead and put on the Kermy cam so you can uh, get a little tour. What am I up to? Let's go. Okay, the first thing we got to do is we got to make sure the uh, pedo covers off. This is actually where the airspeed uh, pressure goes inside there and moves a little diaphragm on the airspeed indicator that. Uh, uh, makes me know what the airspeed is and we always put a cover on like that because the uh, mud daubers around here love to make nests in the little hole there and sometimes when they do and we take off we don't have any airspeed so then I have to open the canopy and put my hand outside the windscreen uh, just doing a quick walk around here check the elevators it looks good looking for safety wire the condition of the fabric the rudder all looks good. Elevator over here. Just kind of looking at everything, looking for dents, looking for leaks. I'll get the guys to uh, help me uh, get the wings off here in a little bit. And we'll show you how the wing fold works. Looking for kind of leaks here. There's the uh, fuel gas escalator. We want to make sure that uh, there's no water in the tank so we always drain that before we fly and water is actually heavier than fuel so it'll sink to the bottom of the tank. This has a Curtis electric prop here and there's actually an electric motor in there. When I get in the cockpit I'll show you how that works. This is the electrical line right here. Most of the uh, World War II airplanes use a uh, 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 hydromatic prop, which is actually uses oil pressure and a big piston up there to change the pitch on the blade. So, um, but this one uh, is the way they originally had it. Everything looks pretty good. I don't really see any leaks. Let me go grab my guys and we will get this thing ready. And one of the things that we always check back in here is where we've got our battery. I want to make sure that it's connected. Okay, it's all connected, looks good. Everything's in the right position. Let me go ahead and throw this in the little pouch over here. Put the pedo okay in there. This little map case, got some little snaps to keep everything where we got it. Make sure the fuel's on, on the main tank, and uh, let me go get the guys. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to get the wings here with Brian. And what has to happen is uh, we go ahead and take this nut off. He has to pull the wing up so the cable gets slack. We take the uh, this off of here. Pull that pin. The uh, and then what I do is I pull this little pin right here. Take that out, and then we let the wing go ahead and fall. So it'll just go down naturally to a certain point. Got that. Oh, not yet. Okay, so now what's going to happen here is I've got to make sure that this pin is out. So we got a little handle here. It locks in there. And when the pin is out right here, the flag goes up on the wing. Okay, Brian, go ahead and push it all the way up. Hard. you got to have to push it really hard. Harder. There we go. Okay, we go in there. And we double check to make sure that the flag's down. It goes up inside the wing. And that's one wing. Okay, I'll just lay that right there. Go ahead and get the other wing here. Brian's got the cable slack. Okay, got it, Brian. Wing. 
and the pin comes out, the flag goes up. Okay, push it up hard. Okay, it's locked. And we double check to make sure that the flag is down. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'll give you guys the cables. I'll tell you what, we'll get the uh, get the engine next here. So now one of the things that we always do before we uh, start one of these things is anytime you have an engine that has cylinders to point down, this is a radial engine, these two particularly on the bottom here, of course everybody knows that the piston goes up and down in the cylinder, and after we shut the engine down, the oil that's left inside the engine will actually drip down to the bottom. So one of the things we want to check for is to make sure we don't have a hydraulic lock. If that cylinder fills up with oil, we want to make sure that that piston has room to go up and down. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to pull the prop through, and sometimes it drips a little oil, and if for some reason we feel it really tight, what we may end up having to do is actually take a couple of the spark plugs out in the bottom cylinders and make sure that they uh, any of the oil drains out of the cylinder. There we go. And we usually go around at least one and a half times, which would be about, you know, oh, six blades is twice around, so that's good. Okay, cool. So that's fine. And uh, you'll go ahead and get the cables. Uh, everything should be okay. So one last quick little walk around. Make sure everything's okay. The cover's there. Of course, now I can kind of look at the ailerons. It all feels good, although I've got my helmet inside. The uh, pin or the flag is down there. This is actually the flap indicator, and this actually comes up. I can't see the flaps. They're basically what they call split flaps, and from the cockpit, I can't see them. They're actually right here. They would come down here and still have the top part of the wing there. So my flap indicators on both sides of the top of the wing. It still looks good back here. Air on the fabric looks good. Okay. And everything looks good. We got our cute little cat here. I won't say anything about what that might mean, but it's cute. want to get in and out of the cockpit, this is actually where you grab the handle to slide the canopy back. So you want to make sure that that's locked. Look and make sure everything up here is okay. Alrighty, go ahead and get in. And you can see there's the flap indicator on that side, flap indicator on that side. Might be a little bit hard. To see what's going on here. I'm gonna see if I can get Brian to spin this thing around. Okay, well let's see if we can. Yeah, alright, just everybody just kind of push on a bulkhead here. Push, push, there we go. Okay. Take down the camera. All right, that's probably good right there. There we go. Now we should be able to see. Yeah. I'll try mounting this thing from the other side. These Grumman airplanes are generally foot goes there, hand grip here, left foot on the wing there. These Grumman airplanes are generally pretty high from the the duck to the TBM. I haven't flown a Hellcat yet, but uh, we've got a great project. Okay, putting on the parachute. Of course, uh, World War II airplanes, the, it's got a bucket seat. 
and a parachute is basically your cushion, so... Okay, that feels about the right height. There's a seat adjustment over here that the seat will go up and down. And my shoulder harness. Another one. Seat belt. Okay, and the way these World War II seat belts work. This uh, male end goes in the right shoulder harness, goes in the left shoulder harness, clips into the clip right there. You make sure that it's locked. Okay, lap belt's tight and the shoulder harness are tight. Okay, so the fuel is on the main tank. There's only one tank. Uh, there's a drop tank if you want to use it. And uh, basically this over here is the flap lever. It's got an interesting uh, vacuum system, believe it or not, and it actually uses suction pressure to raise the flaps up and down. And one of the interesting things about flying a Wildcat is you can put the flap lever full down and before takeoff the flaps will go down. And as you take off, even with full flaps, as the airplane speeds up, the air load will actually push the flaps up. So you can put, there's no flap speed really, because if you're going really fast and you put the flaps down, they basically uh, don't come out. <laughs> so when you start slowing down, the flaps will actually droop a little bit. And some of the Wildcat pilots, if they got in a scrap with a zero or something, they'd put the flaps down. And as they started to slow down, the flaps would come down and increase their turn rate, which wasn't a good thing to dogfight a zero, but at least that would help a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and get the helmet on here. Helmet on. Okay, I've got my cord here for uh, hooking up my radio deal. Usually run it under my parachute cord here so it's not loose in the cockpit. Okay, so there's the fuel, there's the flaps. This is the uh, blower for the supercharger, which uh, we always use low and for takeoff and everything. The only time you use it in high is it actually has like a second gear and it spins the blower up so when you go up in altitude the air gets thinner. It actually uh, allows you to uh, maintain uh, the manifold pressure up to a, a higher altitude. Um, take, off, take off power up to a higher altitude. Here's your trim. Here's the rudder. The elevator trim is right here. We take off zero pretty much with the elevator. About right one degree right rudder trim. Aileron's neutral. Um, this is the tail wheel lock and unlock. Right now it's unlocked so we spun the airplane around. Uh, and we'll put it in the lock position for takeoff. We'll leave it unlocked for taxi. Of course, here's your throttle. This is your mixture. And uh, the mag switches are over here. 